May the security of Jesus' arms keep you, dear family. Forgive my absence and thank you ever so much for your prayers. This has been a week and a half of challenging trials. I've been lazy about saying the binding prayer and left the door open for the enemy to attack the very root of my faith. Dear ones, when you feel hopeless, lost in a blinding snowstorm of events, surrounded by thoughts of worthlessness, know that Satan's agents have come to steal your life in God. Know that you have been very effective and they are trying to knock you out of the race. But isn't it true that when we feel that way, the last thing we do is pursue the Lord? Rather, we wander about in the wilderness looking for other answers. Well, in my case, instead of pressing in with the Lord, I kept wanting to check on the progress of events with our president, even though I know without a doubt he will be in office when all of this is over. The truth of the matter is that I'm lazy and don't persevere like a champion. Rather, I wobble and go off course a bit which only weakens and makes my state of mind much worse, even on the verge of despair. What we need to do is have sufficient information to pray effectively and also to see the results of our prayers. It's very encouraging to see things moving. Beyond that, it's just curiosity and distraction from our relationship with the Lord. To keep our perspective up, I encourage you to pray with Intercessors of America who put out a very focused and filtered set of prayer needs so you don't get too caught up in the world, hungry for more knowledge, but compromising your time with the Lord. That's what I did. The biggest thorn in my heart is still how the wool has been pulled over the eyes of the public because they put all their trust in mainstream media, just like Hitler's people did while he was building concentration camps and quietly arresting those who had the good sense not to trust his controlled media, which was ever so busy glossing over the real agenda, the genocide of the Jews that were hidden from them. The Lord had just warned me to keep a strong grip on his hand and not stray, but I, in my weakness, tried to justify my straying and went off on rabbit trails. Oh, please don't let that happen to you. By faith, you know the outcome. Now you just have to pray it through. So I ask you to forgive me and thank you profusely for being so patient with me and praying. Of course, the enemy jumps on me like white on rice when I leave the door open in my foolishness. So what is the remedy? Repentance, deep repentance, and returning to the duties assigned, not following the suggestions of the enemy who never sleeps. Sometimes it just takes an act of the will to disregard how terrible you feel about yourself. Disregard all the negative voices in your head and recognize you've opened a door, let your guard down, and now you're in a mess of your own making. There's no easy way to get back. You just have to keep climbing by doing what you know is right, regardless of how you feel. When I feel so disconnected and lost, I must go back to where I was before I got sidetracked, pick up where I left off, and move forward, doing what I know is right, until the Lord restores my sense of purpose and direction. I can only imagine that many of you have been going through something like this. Some here on the refuge have and are seeing this as a suffering to offer to the Lord. I have to say, this is one of the greatest sufferings, to feel disconnected and lost from your purpose in life. Lord, is there anything you would like to say? Jesus began, Welcome back. Please tell them your line of reasoning that got you into this mess. Well, I would be curious about any progress that had been made in restoring our president to his rightful place. So I would click on one of my news sources just to take a quick look, right? <laughs> Forget the quick look. That's part of the bait to string you along. 
I would be saying to myself, I know I probably shouldn't be doing this, but let's uh, just take a minute. I'll get right back to what I should be doing. But then I would check and see nothing new. Then I'd check somewhere else, and other things would pop up that stimulated my curiosity. And I would say again, this will only take a minute, and then I'll get on with it. Besides, I want to know what happened to the bear cub the man rescued from the river. And before I knew it, three hours had gone by. Three hours of being saturated in the muck of this world, when I should have been praying or listening for a message or working on a song. Oh, do you see, dear family, how weak I am? Then I would feel so guilty because I knew I had wasted precious time. Like Eve in paradise, I wanted to hide myself. I felt unclean. Jesus continued, And you were unclean. You were contaminated by the doings of the world. Not that they were inherently bad or ugly, but they filled your mind and heart with useless things and took you away from my presence. There is nothing in this world more pitiful than one who wastes their precious time chasing rabbit trails and filling up on junk food when they know they've been chosen by God to serve Him. You come out feeling so polluted, and you are. And then the enemy starts pounding you with your transgressions and how badly you should feel and how worthless you are. And like a drunk, you go back to the Internet to numb out the pain again. I'm so glad you didn't go back to that bottle, but came pressing into prayer. How very clever the devils are. They know just how to pick your curiosity and draw you away from me. But now you are here, my love, and I am your happy God, having you back. And we are going to move forward in spite of the taunting voices that have tried to destroy your resolve. My people, please understand, these are treacherous times, and more demons are in the environment than at any previous time in history. This calls for you to have a deeper and deeper relationship with me, staying ever so close, cleaving to me with all your heart, and not entertaining distractions. The times are too rife with currents and cross-currents to steal your vision and momentum, and truly, only the most committed will survive this time and thrive in it. Be ever so careful of a demon of fear. Understand that the enemy is out to establish a stronghold of fear in every soul on earth. Fear is used to steer people into the direction the enemy wants for them. Fear causes them to shrink and withdraw into themselves, to play it safe rather than to strike out and expand. For this reason, my body is in a tattered mess as tensions run high. Yet there is beauty in the united front you are showing in your commitment to do the right thing for your nation. Continue to pray for your nation and don't allow yourself to be overtaken with fear. I have a plan for every situation you find yourself in, and your prayers have already ruined many of the enemy's moves. These are exciting times like no other, and I am right beside you in all situations. Let nothing overtake you, beloved ones. I am with you and have already provided. You have only to seek me, stay close, and do the right thing. Remember to love me and love your brother is the heart of your walk. Walk in love, not in fear, and I will be with you always. Let nothing frighten you. Turn to me when you feel threatened. Grab hold of my hand or even my arm and cling to me. It is there that you will find all you need to cope with that situation. And remember, I am praying for you continuously. You are my adorable bride.